Right, come in the van again. It's Thursday, the looking at the clock, 15th of November, yeah. and uh, we're going to have a little look round the van, like we said, we're going to what we like, what we dislike, and some of the things that went wrong with it. So, and after four years, I think we know fairly well what we like and what we what don't, we don't like. like. Yeah, Poppy so, likes this chair. Yeah, Poppy knows what she likes. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to start in the bathroom and I'm going to work my way forward. So right, the bathroom. Uh, I mean, it's a good sized bathroom. It's, it's a decent width. So there's plenty of room to sort of get changed in, even for me. Um, the shower is a really good size. Um, I think if I get in, I'll probably show you. I mean, a big bloke like me can get in here and I've got a bit of elbow room. So yeah, it is a good size, an unusual sort of shower thing, two drain holes. It would be better if they were on opposite sides, but you can't have everything. Decent sized sink. There's plenty of cupboard space in the, in the bathroom. So you've got cupboard there. You've got cupboard up here. You've got shelf space there. And there's cupboard space in here as well, with shelves in there as well. So, so you've got like three shelves in there. So we tend to fit other um, that uh, table in there as well. So yeah, that's, so it's good size thing. Um, things we don't like about it, I think that the this little towel rail thing is a bit mean. Yeah, this little towel rail is a bit mean. It's just a, like a pipe really. The newer vans have. Um, a radiator uh, but what else the cup they get the table out above the oh yeah toilet. getting the table out so if you're in if you're in here it's it's a little bit awkward to get the table out because you've got to lift it over the toilet I mean I know you struggle with it don't you struggle putting it away more than getting it out yeah it? yeah and behind this table it's a bit of an unwieldy thing mm. Yeah, so you know, carrying this all the way through from front to back, it can <laughs> could be a bit of a problem. And you've got the table extender in there as well. So uh, yeah, it, there's always a problem when you've got a table. Yeah, you don't have a separate uh, cupboard for it. it no, I'd, I'd like a separate cupboard. I'd also like a table that you can take outside the van and put on legs, rather than that's only got one leg, so it's. It's like a what? What are you shaking your head for? <laughs> it's, <got one> leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only got one leg, so um, it it won't stand up outside. No, no. But then you couldn't use it as an office table. No, no. You need two, really. You need two. Yeah. Anyway, that's the bathroom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very nice. It's oh, always got a skylight as well. Yeah. Yeah. And a mirror. <coughs> and, a, and a cup that we never use. <laughs> Right. right, the bedroom. Um, start with the beds, really, I suppose. We really like the, the single beds, comfy beds. We've got all the bedding off at the moment, so uh, and all the cushions and everything on there. But you've got a good good um, duvet mattress. That's going to be weird, upside down. You've got a good size mattress. You will use a mattress topper. And yeah, it's really, really comfy in here. Um, like the we like the single beds and every layout we've looked at we're always looking at single beds nice headboard isn't there so yeah there's plenty of locker space all around so there's six lockers in here so loads of space to store things you've got the tv i say you've got the tv this is your tv, TV. isn't it <laughs> <laughs> we have a tv in the bedroom yeah, yeah we have a tv in the bedroom which you can both watch which is great um, and we have this hooked up so that we can watch terrestrial TV in there and we can watch uh, satellite as well. Not at the same time, but... No, no. <laughs> Impossible, <laughs> isn't it? You could have a split screen as well. Um, yeah, things we don't like about the bedroom... Well, to start with, I mean, the thing we do like is, is the cupboards. So the, the, the hanging space is pretty good. It's nice and tall and it's quite deep and reasonably wide. Of course, you've got two of them, and some of the vans we've looked at recently only have one of these, and probably about half the size, mm. which is, would simply not be enough. 
not that we take a lot of clothes with us things we don't like about it is when you when you close this door and we tend to leave this door wedged open I don't know what we've done with the wedge that's gone You've missing has it I've lost the wedge yeah. yeah but when we wedge this door open it's very difficult to get, to get, get in, in the, the cupboard, cupboard. Well, I find that, it difficult. well I suppose it's easily solved by closing the door really well, isn't it, it? Is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a it's deal not, breaker or anything no, is it it's, uh, no. it's an inconvenience yeah so really the only other thing we could do with um it's probably more lock at more storage space but having said that these lockers are very generous Mm. They're very big and you've got a huge locker under here. This is absolutely enormous really isn't mm. it? You, fit it is, yeah. you put your skis under there can you? Yeah, I mean the only other thing that um, you find a bit annoying is the fact you've got the boiler and all yeah. the heating under your yeah. bed. Yeah, I mean in the, in the winter when we've got it going full tilt it gets quite hot underneath the bed doesn't it yeah and it clicks when and it clicks when, you, when it switches well on. it makes more of a noise when it's on gas yeah so that that can keep you awake because didn't you say the newer vans have got it under the seat of the front no they've actually got it under under, here. under the kitchen it's sort right. of sort of in this area yeah the, the newer van yeah because a lot of people have found that it gets too hot in the bedroom yeah and um, there's nothing there's only like blown air and yeah one radiator there isn't there that's right but other than that no the, be the bedroom, bedroom is it's great it's great yeah also like having blinds and curtains as well I yeah. didn't mention that but you can put the blind up and you can draw the curtains and that really shuts out the light mm. and it's easy to do isn't it yeah some yeah. of them got like little clips on them and yeah a bit annoying. And clips fall off this is a fair I mean as for the blinds I suppose they're they're pretty good aren't they mm. Is we've only got one uh, one blind we've got a problem with it got a bit stiff putting it up and down but yeah blinds are good obviously it's a bit, it is a bit of a shove to give to push it up but yeah I, I could start a new thing here playing with blinds couldn't I <laughs> <laughs> well the bin men have just arrived just as I'm gonna <laughs> film what's in the kitchen so if you hear any thumping about it's not poppy it's the bin men all right kitchen kitchen start with the lockers these lockers are a good size you've got one either side of the microwave and you can fit most things in there and the amount of stuff and food that we, we shove in here you've got lockers up there put our bananas and fruit up there don't we? nice microwave uh, it's a good microwave and I can run it as well I can operate it there's a button here that says quick start and you press that three times for three minutes that's, it, yeah. that's basically it <laughs> I think I find these microwaves, you know, a bit complicated <laughs> to use. But if I've got a button that says "Quick Start", start. I'm quite happy. Yeah. There's a cupboard up here where I keep all my satellite stuff. Don't look in there. Don't. No, and it's locked in no. there. <laughs> uh, nice size free freezer, and a and a nice size. Let's switch this on because you get some lightning and it's automatic energy selection so we really like that so if you you press this button here a it chooses between whether it's on 240 volts gas if if there's no 240 volts and your engine's not running and battery if uh, it's actually the alternator is not the battery if you're driving so and it does that automatically so we don't have to worry about what I mean so, so we really 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 like the fridge so, you know if we were changing our van then obviously something with automatic energy selection would be great yeah okay the the work surface in the kitchen is not huge we put i tend to have the toaster there don't we tassimo there which leaves about that much to prepare food what you've got and i'll probably put it away is you've got a thing that goes on the top here so we tend to use that space and this space but you can't use that space obviously if you're cooking, cooking. no or well, you've got the oven on because you mustn't have that down if you've got the oven on that's right so on in the in the on the hob you've got electric hop hot plate which we don't never use which we've never used and three gas burners which are reasonable size I would like a bigger gas burner but these are medium sized burners and a small burner there yeah okay coming on to things we never use it's got a grill 
Yeah. Which, yeah, we never use. Used about twice. Yeah. We don't use it now, we've got the bridge monk, you know. So. No. And it's got a good size oven, and it is a good size oven. I think it's almost as big as the one we've got indoors. Yeah. So that's good. Things we don't like. Well, one thing oh, right, was disappointing on. is that, I mean, when we had the Bailey, we had a, they gave us a bowl that fitted, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. This doesn't really fit, does it? It's, no, it's so <laughs> another one, bought another one, and yeah. that was too tall. Yeah. So, so we've got uh, a top on it. No. So it would be really nice if Swift are listening, if they put a bowl in there that you could actually fit in there yeah, properly. Yeah. So if or if anyone knows of a bowl that, that would fit in would there fit properly, there, I'd, I'd love the the link on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Tap is nice. Yeah. We like the tap. Yeah. That shelf is handy and the, the you've plugs. Got two forty volt sockets and you've got switches up there and it's also a handy little light and you bring it down. Yeah, I'll show you. You've got a handy little light under here, little strip light, and that helps increase the light quite a bit. Yeah, so. There's nothing we've really nothing like this, like. is there, really? No. It's, uh, There's locker space under here as well, so you can put pots and pans down there. I tend to keep them in that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we've, some of those things we don't yeah. really like, What's that? what don't we really not keen on. Oh good grief yeah. Well that's what I was coming on to is this monstrosity in here. Now this when designers designed this they probably thought oh that's a great idea we'll put one of those carousels in there and you can get at everything by turning it around. And of course what happens with it is you put all your stuff in there and you put pots and pans down there. The, the pan handles then crash against the side so then you can't turn it and then you can't find it because you shoved all the stuff in there so you think oh I'll put everything under there and then you can't get at it because it's uh, it's too it's too tucked underneath so really I keep saying I'm going to do it and I'll, I probably will is if I keep in the van I would get rid of this carousel I absolutely hate it mm. I notice on the new van they've just gone for shelves yeah yeah the new version of this which is much better so no I'm not keen on on the carousel it's a bit, I mean these cupboards are a bit messy anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we don't like, but yeah. everything else. Everything else is a good kitchen. It's a good this. kitchen, we've got a nice you got a light, light above. above. It'd be good if that was a fan um, thing. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Had that before, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, on to the lounge. Um, the fact that these chairs swivel makes it a good size lounge. We've had six people in here, haven't we? And these these seats are really comfy. So uh, and, then, and what I can do here is I can sit here and I can watch the telly, which is over there. Yeah. So that's my f favourite, and this is Poppy's favourite position here as well. So she can watch the telly. Well, she doesn't watch. She just snoozes, don't you? Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is that if I pull this chair forward and swivel it right round. I can do most of my editing on this table and it's a good it's good height for using the laptop it's not down there or it's not up here it's about the right height so it makes a really good office this table uh, the other thing is obviously we've got the travel seats here we liked the idea of having travel seats we still like the idea of having travel seats and the only drawback with them of course is it's a little bit hard to actually get in there let me just try and demonstrate here so I mean when you've got the table in place yeah it's because this is quite long isn't yeah it? The, the seat squab is quite a long squab it doesn't really need to be that long I don't no, quite know why they've done it that I was long. just thinking that it doesn't really need to overhang like that no because I mean my knees are, it's right underneath my knees there yeah I mean I tend to end up sort of sitting on the edge of it yeah 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 Poppy's off now you're getting bored <laughs> <laughs> other than that we like the lounge don't we anything else you want to add no I mean that this is it's quite comfortable I mean Neat. part of the thing is we have the covers on it and yeah. I find it because of you know yeah because this one ones. makes a mess yeah and sometimes it's easier to sit on them without yeah. the covers yeah but well, it is but then they get then mucky they don't get they <laughs> so yeah yeah 
but otherwise, um, me when we get the table extender out here, yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, because we got a, the table extender plugs into see that plugs into these holes here, and it brings the table out here. So it's handy for playing Scrabble, isn't it, Pops? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. One thing I ought to add is uh, in in the crossover from the kitchen to the lounge, for some bizarre reason they put the plates in the lounge. And of course, I don't know if you can see this. Let's step back a bit. Is that if you're in the kitchen and you want to serve up, you've then got to go into the lounge and reach over everyone to get to the plates and cups and everything. It's all right when there's no one sitting there, but. It's awkward if somebody is. Yeah, if you've got guests and you're, you're serving up, it's yeah. quite awkward reaching over them to get to the plates. Yeah. So it would be better if they put the plates this end, but then you would have lost well, a bit of food space. Cupboard, you know, yeah. so. I noticed in the new one, it yeah. keeps saying the new one, the better car 574, yeah. they've actually got the, the plates in that cupboard there. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, both those cupboards I've, I've struggled a little bit with. Well, you do to, because so you've got to like you've got to reach across from from, from here, yeah, into there. And I mean, I really struggle to reach the corner of that cupboard. It yeah. certainly can't. I mean, what I use is um, the grippers that you, <laughs> you use on the bar. The serving tongs. The serving tongs, yeah. Well, if there's a packet of crisps in there that I want, yeah. I get hold of the corner of it, yeah, and I carefully pull it out. Pull it out. Mm. Mm. So, start reach. Yeah, it, it's funny all the things that you find, you know, after yeah. using a motorhome, isn't it? But yeah, that's right. And things, it's not, you know, it's, not, the it's not the end of the world. No. There's always going to be a compromise. Yeah. Bobby, don't chew your feet. No. Right. The final thing is the the driving experience, I suppose. But um, a bit difficult to show you that when parked up, but. <laughs> Well, and it, it's it's quite a comfy position. I mean, on a long journey, it it's um, it's quite good, you, and you can get quite comfy and drive long distances without any real trouble. And I do have back issues, so it's uh, you know I've been it's been all right. The other thing I would say is that the steering wheel never it, it, to get the steering wheel closer, you pull it out. So I think my arms are about the right position at the moment what then I find is I'm too close to the steering wheel and my knees are banging against this this bit here so it would be nice if the dashboard was lower or the, <laughs> the wheel came up further and what I end up doing is pulling the seat back a little bit further and then I'm stretching to reach the steering wheel yeah so I don't think they've got the the driving ergonomics quite right they've only been doing making this van for about 15 years haven't they so there you go <laughs> That's why I'd probably be looking at a Ford or, or, or something like that where they've actually thought about uh, uh, driving ergonomics. Other than that, it's it's a pleasure to drive. It, it, the engine is responsive, uh, there's plenty of power when you're going up hills, even with a car on the back. Uh, the switch gear is fine. The, the, I don't know if you can see this, can you come in a little bit closer? You've got some silly fiddly switches down here. For headlamps and um, fog lights which are completely hidden when you're driving you can't see them and you, you, you try and remember where they are um, other than that the, these these switches are quite easy to use the radio is a standard um, FM type radio there's no CD with it. I, I, I liked having a CD. Can I have a CD back? Well, you haven't bought any CDs for youngs. Oh, but we've got a collection of CDs, haven't we? Yeah. I'd probably buy CDs because that's why we used to buy them to use in, in the car, didn't we? Yeah. And the other thing is it'd be nice if it had DAB on it. I know. And the new vans do, but there you go. Stop moaning. Yeah. Right. I bought this add-on uh, rear view camera. Uh, for for the van and it, I don't know if you can see but it actually clips on to the mirror that would, came with the van now the mirror that came with the van was a silly little screen it was about that big like that um, and it was you know it gave you the rear view and the reversing view which this camera does which this screen does but it was tiny absolutely mm. tiny mm. It's, it was designed it was designed for a car and it's meant to act as a normal mirror with a reversing view, but absolutely pathetic. Now this thing has two two views, so when you put it in reverse, I just realised I can't put it in reverse. I've got the clutch claw on. When you put it in reverse, 
you get a downward view and we've never been able to get it to look down so it can see the tow bar but it, it gives you a reasonable view and that's the sort of the view backwards nice view of the garage there but yeah the camera works okay it's not brilliant in um, low light when it's dark it gets confused by headlights yeah like having it there and it, it's if you sit if you, this is from my sort of view it's a reasonable size and you can see fairly well in good light right what went wrong and I've <laughs> got a list here do you want to read it I'll read it shall I yeah go on uh, the pipe fell off water leak now that was right, one of the worst come things, with me wasn't it? yeah yeah under the bed under here we were in in bed one night and we kept hearing the pump go and every so often it would go and what we found is that, that pipe here over here I don't know if we, how well we can see that push fit connector push fit connector had come loose so I thought oh push fit connector push it back it was still leaking we came back didn't we the floor was all wet and it filled this area up with yeah, water and out here oh, and it, it was dripping dripping out on the floor out here mm. so push fit connectors are probably nice and cheap to fit and all that sort of thing but they're an absolute pain once they go yeah. if you've got a push fit connector that's leaking you're going to need to change the push fit connector because what it does it's got like claws on it and the claws grab hold of the plastic cable and uh, um, they make a groove in it so once they've they've they're connected up and you take them off then that groove then becomes a source of the leak so what we had to do was we had to get it, get the the pipe um, connector replaced and the pipe changed as well right so whilst we're still in the bedroom one of the things that, that happened was that the one of these screws fell out of this cupboard and I think it's that one because they, what they then did is they put a, like a, a plug in there and screwed it back up so you know things like the screws not quite long enough going in there's had a few sort of screws fall out haven't we what yeah. else have we got oh we've got the bathroom cabinet door oh yeah <laughs> yeah we've had fun with this bathroom cabinet door it it doesn't never seem to fit properly at all but these hinges these hinges were sort of they always seem to come loose and the door was coming open as we were driving along and you can see it doesn't really sort of fit all that well and I've tried to adjust it but there you go it's a minor thing while you're in there the catch yeah. on the shower door broke oh yeah <laughs> yeah shower door there was a like a pull catch here uh, that broke off it's like one of these on this side you know you don't need it but it just seems a bit flimsy I think the shower door itself seems a bit flimsy to be perfectly honest with I've got a couple of things yeah. while we're still in the bedroom. We've got yeah. bedside panel screws. Oh, pillow. yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, we, we, yeah, I mean, for a little while, we seem to be putting screws back all the time. This screw here that holds this this panel on fell off. And uh, it's got a bit, bit of batten there. And the screw just came out, and so I've glued it back in there with a bit of Gorilla Glue. So I know, I know plenty of people like Gorilla Tape, but I like Gorilla Glue. Um, right, so I think the rest of the things are in, in here. Okay. Uh, we've got a crack in the sink, but we think we did that. Didn't we? I think we dropped something. There's a little crack in the sink. Yeah, it's not no. got any worse or any no. better. So. No, so I think there's another one there. I think we. I think what happened was stuff falls out of this cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. Into there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, um. So the other thing over here was this tap. Oh, the tap was leaking. That was all, that was like two weeks after we bought it, wasn't it? It wasn't very long. No. And we found it was dripping with it in the hot position. I think. It. Yeah. I think yeah. it was the hot position. You had to make sure that. Well, I, I thought it you had to make sure it was like that. Yeah. Otherwise, it carried on dripping. Yeah. So. But it's been fine. It, it's been fine they? ever yeah. since. Yeah. 
So that's that. Yeah. Um, retaining strap sofa screw came loose. Oh yeah, yeah, up here, this thing on the on this cushion. What you've got is a strap here, and that plugs into a connector there. Let's get this out of the way. So that allows you to remove the the back cushion, and there's one here that holds the um, holds the, the bottom cushion in place. Uh, it's going to be quite difficult to see that as well, but it's this th this thing here, this screw, it's like that one which you can probably see, actually came loose and just meant that the sofa was sliding yeah, about. Yeah, well, I think that's consequence of just screwing these things into a bit of plasterboard. Mm, mm. Yeah. The you know the the whole idea of screwing things onto the wall into into plasterboard. This this stuff at the back is, you know, th this stuff is quite thin. Mm, mm. And then expecting it to hold something that's going to move about. Yeah. It's yeah. not it's not no. brilliant. And while while we're here, this yeah. it's annoying that age that keeps falling off. Oh yes. <laughs> in the in this sofa cupboard. It's got this plastic panel and that every time you put something in there and you bring it out that blooming thing falls out. So I've tried gluing it, I've tried sycophlexing it, I think the only thing I can do is somehow put a little, little screw in there so it might be one of my little jobs I'll do when I get home. Or loads and loads of Gorilla tape around it. Not Gorilla tape no, it might, no. I've tried Gorilla glue and even that <laughs> Even that failed. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so what else we got? Well, while we're in here, this entire panel oh, yeah. was wrong, wasn't yeah. it? That's what right. happened was that this panel here that goes all the way round, uh, underneath the window and round to there, wasn't actually fitted in the right place. So what I had was that this panel was out here somewhere. Was that it? Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that was out there, and whilst this side was about two inches further in, mm. so they fit the fitted the whole panel skew width. Because this one probably screwed in properly or something. No, no, that was fine. It's it was, was this, that? it's this bit here, yeah. this top top surround. Right. Okay. So they, uh, I think Swift did that. I think they had to replace it, so they, they spent quite a bit of time just getting the thing to fit in properly. Yeah, yeah. So what else have we got in here? Well, we had the problem with the sergeant power. Oh unit. yeah, yeah. The sergeant, the sergeant power supply unit. Okay, a wonderful bit of kit. Mm. Uh, it supplies all the 12 volt power, and it's got the 240 volt fuses, uh, breakers in there as well. What happened with this was that we were dr it was at Fort William. Fort William. We were yeah. driving along and we noticed that the rear view camera had stopped working. Yeah, it's when we, we went to get some shopping, didn't we? We came back out. Yeah. You went to switch the camera on, no camera. Yeah. So you thought that camera had gone, so you try that screen a minute gone. So yeah. you try the other screen, that yeah. wouldn't come on. No. And we thought strange. So anyway, you took it all down. We we yeah. headed off without a yeah. reversing camera. Yeah. Then we stopped and we thought, that's funny, the gas has come mm, on the fridge. Well, yeah, we, th we thought that. that but then we didn't, didn't, didn't tweak, tie the two together. No, didn't tie the two together until you went on Facebook oh, oh, yeah. and asked, had anybody else done that? And they said, has, that's gone, has your fridge, fridge stopped, stopped working, working on 12, 12 volts? volts? Yeah, and so. we dis you discovered that the same fuse yeah, so both. that's right. So the the twelve volts wasn't working on the fridge. The rear view camera stopped working, and someone said, "Oh, it's your sergeant power supply." It's a known problem. Uh, it, the same uh, supply supplies the rear view camera and the fridge. And I don't think it was ever designed to supply both of them. I think it was no. designed for the fridge. But it didn't blow a fuse, did it? It blew something in. The Is it like um? Someone said it was like a resistor or something like that. Yeah. So we had to get that sent back to sergeant and uh, get a, a replacement one. Uh, Todd, Lots of fun Todd, games, isn't it? Todd's Bridges. did that. Yeah. Uh, that, right. Adjusting door. What's that? Oh yeah, door. This uh, this habitation door. The um, the catches on the door here 
forever need adjusting and come out let me just shut the door it shuts quite well now but I was finding that I couldn't shut the door properly so I ended up adjusting these these screws here that one there as well and eventually it took me ages yeah eventually I got it so the door shuts without too much of a slam the other thing I would say about the door and it's probably I don't know <clears throat> if I should say this but I think when we put it up on chocks we, it, the chassis twists and then what we find is that the door won't shut again no, properly that's right, yeah. so should go high up the chocks yeah last week at Methot Fell we had one wheel chopped up yeah and this yeah. door was it was quite stiff to open so it must twist slightly mm -hmm. just enough to make it difficult to make the door open and close yeah all right so um camera surround peeled off oh yeah <laughs> come with me see that but I'll probably will it best to ex explain that the the camera um, what would you call it paint it's not really paint I think it's powder coating it is it's peeling off the um, the camera uh, lens around the lens uh, that will think they've got like a, um, an ox um, aluminium uh, alloy on one side and they've painted over it with, or powder coated over it and we only had the van about six months and not that started peeling off so we got them to change the camera and uh, they changed the camera no problem that was Marquis and I think about six months after that it started peeling off again mm. so mm. I don't know if anyone else has noticed it might be the salty atmosphere you know because we're yeah. by the sea it, uh, yeah. it might cause a bit more oxidization so if anyone else who's got a swift with a camera on the back has that problem let me know yeah I think you've got the catch on the 240 volt hookup what's that no. yeah I'm outside again <laughs> <laughs> right what's what happened is that the catch here actually broke it's supposed to be just there it's supposed to be like a clip and that sort of holds it in place so what I had to do was I put a bit of velcro in there so we've got this velcro bits here and that holds it quite well it would be better if they'd fitted that in the first place see if you can spot what the problem is here it's November middle of November and it's not that cold so we've had a few problems with the dashboard um, three things really I don't know if the first thing is the dashboard, but uh, anyway, I've got to say it. The outside temperature um, sensor, which is mounted in the wing mirror, uh, just displays random temperatures. So I've been meaning to get it fixed. and At the moment it says it's minus five. I know it's cool, but it's not minus five out there. Um, so I'll have to get that looked at. I might have asked them to have a look on the service. Maybe they can figure something out by hooking it up to a diagnostics. The other thing is that what I found when I was first had the, the motorhome is that the dashboard display was quite dim and it was difficult to read uh, the miles per hour or the speed you were doing on there. You, you, you can see it quite well now because we've got all the blinds closed but when it's quite sunny it was difficult to read the speedo so that was a known problem so what they did is they did a update to the dashboard did they, they changed the dashboard didn't I they? I think they changed the dashboard no yeah. no that was for another reason oh, was it? no they did they did a software update it basically that's right I took it to a Fiat professional dealer at, at um, Walton Summit and they did a dashboard update and what that does is it basically switches the dashboard backlight on permanently 
so you've got the dashboard backlight on all the time and that does help a little bit but I think I still think it's it's not brilliant um, that that display and someone said it's probably partly due to the fact I'm six foot the 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 seats are on a swivel which brings them up even higher so I'm probably sitting up higher than a normal a normal a normal person would be sitting up uh, probably by about two inches and it means that from that sort of lofty height you're looking down at the dashboard and it's probably sort of in, in the shade. The other thing that happened was that the dashboard warning light started coming on. Do you remember which one it was? It was a weird one wasn't it? It was something like diesel in water in the diesel. Water in the, That's right yeah. it was water in the diesel light came on. Yeah. Oh no you know sort of panic, re real that? panic what do we do now? And uh, Again Facebook to the rescue someone said that there is a problem with these dashboard binnacles where lights start coming on and it seemed to get worse when the cruise control was on um, why it was linked to the cruise control I don't know anyway Fiat professional at Walton Summit again they changed the dashboard binnacle that time so that fixed that fault is that it for for dashboard problems and the only other one we had because was the old service light in france but that wasn't the dashboard oh no that was no. the people who changed the oil that's right we had this thing and, and it inspired a whole new uh, set of uh, views on youtube didn't it we <laughs> i did a dashboard menu um video after that so if you want to look that up i'll put it up there somewhere um and that's probably our most popular video ever with the most thumbs down <laughs> with the most, most thumbs down as well so I'm not going to repeat that video but basically the a light came on whilst we were in France that said that it need, we needed to do a service which is no biggie you know it's not it's not the end of the world but what we when we read the handbook and it said if you don't deal with this after so many miles it goes into limp home mode and then I started worrying because we were in France, middle of France, it was like 700 miles to get home. And then I started panicking, so we ended up taking to a French garage to get that fixed. And it, really what had happened was that the people who did the service previously hadn't reset the, um, the oil service uh, indicator. They hadn't reset it back to zero or whatever you do. So a little French man in a French garage kindly fixed that for us with a bit of franglais. Is that it yeah. for dashboards? Things. Nineteen things that yeah. went wrong, yeah. and that's not. It's not. It sounds awful when you read them all out. Yeah. But I suppose I, you know, and people have said this. Motorhomes are complicated things. Mm. They're like little houses on wheels. Yeah. There's a lot of things that can go wrong that often do go wrong. We've had nothing really major. No. no. We've had no uh, water leaks. No surrounds falling off. No. 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 <laughs> I've seen some horror things, you know, with some caravans where people have gone back to them and the whole of the the roof thing has caved yeah, in. Yeah, so, so they've had some people have had this this thing fall on the head. Yeah. You know, yeah they've been I driving know. along. Nothing nothing like that. No. The worst thing was the the water leak, I think, the, you know, with that push on push on valve. Yeah. Is that the worst thing? Yeah. Yeah, and that was just it, it it, penny pinching again I think is that they hadn't made the pipe quite long enough to fit in the push fit connector mm, yeah so the move going up and down they probably saved off. a couple of millimeters of plastic pipe yeah, yeah. so in so, conclusion you got to do the conclusion <laughs> so we're on the spot yeah there are more things about it that we like yeah that we than we don't like yeah um, it's not it's given us a hell of a lot of pleasure there have been a few like we've said 20 odd things that have gone wrong that said to go back for warranties and things like that but apart from that well, we've done nearly 40,000 miles in it yeah about 39,000 all over something. the place it's comfortable it's you say it's nice to drive yeah I, I, it's, no, I've enjoyed it why would we want to change um well the only reason we might want to change is because as you get towards well <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. I always say it's up to you when you feel that you'd rather drive something smaller then we need to seriously look at uh, downsizing yeah well while you're happy to drive something it's not this the, size no I mean that's right I'm not not worried about the size or you know there might be might be other reasons why we want to change yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah, so, I mean 
we we like the idea that we can take people about yeah but we also like the idea that we'd like two sofas in the lounge yeah you know so yeah. i mean that would be nice when having two sofas but that would make yeah. it more like a caravan and yeah le less easy so to take I'm, people I'm out i'm always struggling with things that why do i want to change this yeah and i yeah. struggle because i think well what what do i want that's better yeah yeah you know. I mean, we we always end up looking at layouts that are very similar, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I think the one I, ke I kept looking at was the Adria Coral 670 SLT, I think it is. Yeah. Very yeah. similar layout to this. Um, drawback with it is the doors on the other side. Yeah, yeah. You're never keen on having a door on the, on the on the wrong side. If you're parked in a lay-by and you open the door, you're you're open to the traffic. Well, but, it's, it's having the dogs, isn't it? I mean, we know we're open to the well, traffic. Yeah, I know, we know to look, but the dogs... Yeah, dogs don't know Dogs to tend look. to charge out, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So, no, but... And what do you think? Do you... I like new things. <laughs> <laughs> I like new things, Well, yeah. I like new things. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it has done a lot of miles. Yeah, yes, you know. yeah. Um, and that's a good thing in some ways because there are some motorhomes that sit on driveways and never go anywhere mm. and you know that the engine's going to get all sludged up and bits going to rust off and yeah and rubber doesn't like sort of sitting still yeah. <laughs> that sounds tires. interesting that tires tires don't like sitting tires still. go um, go yeah. uh, I, they go funny shapes if you leave them sitting well, we, for a long time. Well, we did time. have that when we didn't use one of the vans a lot. We yeah. started getting cracking, didn't we, on the yeah. edge of the tyres. Yeah. Yeah, was that the Starfire? That was a Starfire. Well, it was sitting much. in the drive in the sun, wasn't it? Yeah. And the tyres started cracking. But I, I, I thought we, there were times when we couldn't use that when we wanted, as much as we wanted to. No, no, we couldn't. So, yeah. Anyway, so it's sort of that's going on off on, on a whole sort of different tangent, has not yes, it? Right. <laughs> but yeah, it, it would be nice to have something new. Yeah, definitely. But you know, we've got to find a lot, lot of money to yeah. to do that. So we keep we enjoy going to the shows, don't we? Because we can yeah. look at what's new, and we often still come away and say, "Well, it's still like this." Yeah. But I take your point. Something new is very nice. But yeah, yeah. Maybe something new that wasn't quite the the step up in in uh, our savings yeah yeah well that's why we've been looking for <laughs> yeah. the Bailey Alliance yeah we? because it isn't such a it isn't such a massive leap. step up no, but it, no. then it's a step down and there are yeah, things, things that, you, here that, that we, we, miss. we might yeah. miss yeah. yeah so you know yeah anyway that's it for now for our four-year review uh, if you like what you see give us a thumbs up leave a comment because obviously I think this video invites quite a Drop few comments. comments yeah and uh, well uh, We'll see what we think and if you've got any suggestions for uh, anything you might want to buy <laughs> let us know uh, so subscribe hit that notifications icon and we'll catch up with you soon see you then <laughs>